Okay, hello and welcome. This is the first video in the internal medicine series for clinical clerkships. Today we'll be discussing the topic of renal tubular acidosis and beginning with type 1 renal tubular acidosis. So really the definition of a renal tubular acidosis is that there is an excess or an accumulation of acid in the body due to failure of the kidneys to appropriately acidify the urine. And there are really three major subtypes that students will need to be worrying about. So it's type 1, type 2, and type 4. Um, so I think one of the biggest problems that students tend to have with renal tubular acidosis is not necessarily being able to, um, you know, not being unable to classify. They they are able to classify. You know, they, we look it up today and we see the the classification similar to the one we see here, um, perhaps a little bit more simple, and, and we label a patient with type one, type two, or type four RT, and then we begin to manage the patient that way. But in the end, you know, I don't think w uh, many students tend to appreciate the pathophysiology behind why certain ab electrolyte abnormalities are the way that they are. And really it becomes more of a rote memorization, which is, you know, not really what you want because you won't remember it in the end after a lot of time because you don't understand why um, why uh, patient, our pre patient is presenting the way that they're presenting. So really the purpose of this video is to give um, students and uh, help students better classify RTA, uh, not, not really only by memorizing the typical algorithms as seen here, um, but to really truly understand the pathophysiology behind electrolyte abnormalities that define each subtype of the RTA. So let's begin with talking about type 1 renal tubular acidosis. So in type 1 renal tubular acidosis, the, the central hallmark defect is that there is impaired distal ammonia excretion of this NH4. Um, cation, right? And this NH4 cation, the way I think about it is really, it becomes a, this proton, which is the one that we need to worry about, plus a neutral ammonium, okay? Ammonia, excuse me. So this is really, if we, if we were to put quite simply, this is equivalent to the NH4 plus in terms of, in terms of acid load, right? And the location of this is distal. So for type 1 RTA, it's right about here in the junction between the distal tubule and also the collecting duct, right? And this is really, this is very important because in terms of uh, acidifying the urine, this right here, this is the most uh, distal area where um, the urine can be acidified. So that will be very important when we talk about type 2 and type 4 renal tubular acidosis. For now, let's follow up right here. So uh, back in this slide, we see that the, the central hallmark of type 1 RTA is a defect in the HK ATPase. Normally in physiological conditions, this, this HK ATPase, right, it serves to shunt the proton out of the uh, interstitium, out of the, um, out of the uh, um, alpha intercalated cell and into the lumen, and ergo acidifying the urine. In the process, the potassium is brought back. It is reabsorbed. But when this is broken, we see that what happens is the potassium cannot be reabsorbed and also the proton is unable to be excreted and that builds up in the body and it, it doesn't end up in the urine. So because the proton doesn't end up in the urine, we see that the urine pH is greater than 5.5. In addition, the plasma uh, potassium will be low because it's unable to be reabsorbed. So as I mentioned earlier, type 1 renal tubular acidosis is really the most, um, the most severe acidemia that occurs um, of the uh, different subtypes. And because of that, all you need to remember now is that the plasma bicarbonate will be extremely low, less than 15. Okay. We'll talk about why it is much lower than the other um, ones when we get to the episodes uh, for the RTA type 2 and also RTA type 4. For now, just remember this. And urine anion gap is something that the clinicians will oftentimes get just to see if a patient has um, potentially a renal tubular acidosis. And it, it's the Na plus the uh, urine, the urine Na plus the urine K minus the urine chloride. And that's basically the equation of giving you the UAG, the urine anion gap, okay? And this is important really because, um, <laughs> so we, we, we basically see that the uh, the way that this is positive or negative really depends on the magnitude of the chloride uh, chloride anion. And in the urine, the chloride anion is typically bound to unmeasured cations, right? So the presence of, for instance, if you have very high urine chloride, that suggests to us that there is also a very high load of unmeasured cations in the urine. Why is this important? Well, let's ask ourselves the question of why the UAG is positive in type 1 RTA. So it's positive if the magnitude of the chloride is, is decreased, right? So why would it be decreased? Well, chloride parallels the presence of NH4 plus in the urine. And as we discussed before, NH4 plus is really just the proton for all intents and purposes, right? 
And that makes a lot of sense to us now, doesn't it? Because the proton is low in the urine, and as a result, the chloride is also low in the urine. And because of this, the UAG will be positive, okay? So we talked about this and that. And, and this is something that I like to think about that's really very relevant to type 1 RTA, okay? So let's begin by talking about the urine calcium. Why is urine calcium high, right? So what happens is, remember, we're always coming back to the central hallmark of type 1 RTA. And the central hallmark is that there is impaired, okay, distal secretion of proton. Because of that, the proton will end up building up in the body, okay? So, excuse me while I draw the stick figure right here, this person right here, okay? And the, the, the proton is very high in his body. And what happens then, because the proton is, is very high, it begins to try to leach the bone um, because it's trying to find a buffer, right? We're trying to buffer the pH. So what happens is the bone is a rich source of calcium, okay? And also phosphate as well. I'll just put pH right here. And what happens is the, the proton will combine with the negative charged phosphate and what results is that the calcium will be going into the urine thus causing a very high urine calcium and that's very important right um, because as we know if there is excess of the calcium in the urine that will lead to uh, li increased likelihood of stone formation um, specifically the uh, calcium let's see calcium phosphate stones, right? So that's very important for two reasons. So first, calcium phosphate stone is formed because there's excess calcium in the urine. But also remember, back from you know, the USMLE 1, step 1 boards, we remember that the calcium phosphate stones forms in the presence of excessly, excessively high urine pH. And aha, look here. Urine pH is indeed uh, most elevated in type 1 RTA, and this makes a lot of sense now. So when we talk about the urine calcium being high, it should be natural to realize that the urine citrate will be low because citrate is it really it chelates the calcium, right? So if there is high urine calcium, we expect that the urine citrate is high. And um, okay, so now let's talk about the causes of type one RTA, um, causes and associations, I should say. So. Uh, really remember, let's go back to the hallmark of this. Okay, the, the hallmark, the central defect is really that the HKA DPAs is knocked out. Normally, you see that the HKA DPAs is good at functioning for pumping the protons out into the lumen, thus acidifying the urine um, and getting rid of the acid from the body, right? So these two pumps are very, very important. But what happens in Sjogren's syndrome and also um, uh, lupus is that there is an autoantibody, okay, that basically attacks. The, these two, uh, these two anti the, the H, H ATPase and also the HK um, ATPase antiporter. There tends to be high levels of uh, high titers of this, uh, these autoantibodies in these, um, in these two autoimmune diseases. And as you can imagine, if these antiporter or if this antiporter and the H ATPase are knocked out, what's going to happen is that you're basically going to end up with type 1 RTA. You're unable to excrete the, uh, these um, protons into the urine. And in addition, amphotericin and obstructive uropathy, I kind of tend to think of one thing is really that you're, you're, it, it, it's, it's basically going to lead to the destruction of the alpha intercalated cell, right? The, the amphotericin serves as a nephrotoxin and the obstructive uropathy basically builds up, comes backwards, and it, it causes destruction of the alpha intercalated cell first because it's most distal, right? And when that happens, uh, you realize that this whole cell right here will basically die and it will slough off into the lumen. And when that happens, remember, the most distal mechanism for acidifying the urine is destroyed because you lose the ATPases that are attached to the cells. And as a result of that, you will have um, type 1 RTA. So thank you for watching. Um, in the next video, we will be discussing type 2 renal tubular acidosis.